If you're thinking about starting a branded podcast, one key consideration is where you, or maybe the show's host, is going to record podcast episodes. And so you might be thinking about building an in-office or an at-home podcast recording studio. Now, recording studio might make you think of something like this. And that's pretty intimidating looking, right? I mean, what are all those dials and sliders for? Do you need a sort of giant mixing board? The good news is that no, you do not need a giant mixing board. You don't need professional grade wall mounted speakers or anything like that. To build a simple but solid at home or in office recording studio, you really just need the following things. A quiet, compact and non echoey space to record in, a microphone or microphones, mic cables and mic boom arms, and you need a device to record into. That might be a computer or a dedicated standalone recording device. And that's pretty much it. So in this series of videos, I'm going to break down each of these elements. I'll recommend some gear, and I'll give you a sense of how much all this stuff costs. Okay, so let's get into the first element, which is choosing the best place to record your podcast episodes. Now, whether you're going to build a studio at home or at your office, the best spaces to record in are typically small, compact, and out-of-the-way rooms that are isolated from outside noise. So, for example, at home, that might be a room in your basement or maybe a, a den. At the office, you'll need to find a room or a space that's far enough away from the workaday hubbub so that you can minimize ambient noise. Now, in either case, you want to avoid rooms that have windows directly overlooking busy streets because otherwise you're going to get a lot of traffic noise that's going to get picked up in your recording. And you also want to avoid rooms that have lots of open space, like a kitchen or a living room or something like a large conference room. Now, whichever space fits the bill, you also need to set it up to absorb sound as much as possible. Now, this does not mean sticking egg cartons all over the wall because that looks kind of silly. And also, uh, the cardboard is actually too thin to really do much good. But there are a few things you can do to minimize sound bouncing off the floor and the walls and the ceiling, which is important because uh, that results in a kind of echoey effect. So here are a few things you can do. First, choose a room with a carpeted floor or with a large rug, if at all possible. Second, uh, if you have a bookshelves, a lot of books around, you can put that, those in the room. Books are good for absorbing sound. If the room does have windows, uh, you should try to cover them with heavy curtains or drapes. And generally, the more stuff that you have in the room, things like furniture, throw pillows, framed photos, the more of that stuff, the better. You want to avoid rooms with completely bare walls and floors. And finally, be able to turn off or at least turn down heating and cooling, or at least close the vents, uh, because those vents make quite a bit of noise. Now, if you don't have access to a room that exactly fits the bill, don't worry too much about it. The most important thing is that you, you use a space that's quiet and removed from sources of outside noise. Things like street traffic, television, people talking, running water, clanging pots and pans, and so on. Even if the room itself isn't ideal, let's say it does have a bare floor and bare walls, for example, you can still minimize that echo effect by using the right kind of microphone and proper microphone recording technique, which I'll get into in the next video.